Hi everyone, this is Ogar Plinkleton. Welcome to another episode of Existential Physics with Ogar Plinkleton. This is the Magic of Vector Cross Products Part 2. The last video, which was released last month, was Part 1, where we looked at the cross product of a moving electron through a magnetic field. Part 2 is going to deal with angular momentum and the cross product here is the distance from the center of rotation r crossed with the uh, linear momentum of a moving body and we're going to see how that manifests itself and to do that we're going to be using this wheel and also my granddaughter Ilo Plinkleton which we'll be meeting a little bit later. But first, let me put some drawings on the board. It won't take very long. Okay, not the best drawings, but here's our wheel. And I've tried to draw this one like this. And then turning it like this. Okay, so that's what these drawings represent. So let me put the two vectors on here. Remember our initial equation is angular momentum equals the radius crossed with the momentum. Okay, so Let's put on the radius on here, um, and the radius vector is here, and we're going to be spinning this in this direction, and so the momentum vector is perpendicular to R, and it's going in this direction. So that's P. Okay, and the cross product of that equals the angular momentum. And there's a right-hand rule for finding the direction of this. Similar to the other one, but you take your hand and your fingers go in the direction of the rotation. This is rotating this way, and so my thumb is pointing up, and L then is acting in that direction. Okay, but what we're going to do is we're going to spin it. My granddaughter, Ilo, is going to be sitting on a stool that's free to rotate. And I'm going to get this thing spinning, and I'm going to give it to her in this position. And she'll hold it like that, and nothing should happen because the momentum is, or excuse me, the angular momentum is acting straight up and down. So she'll just sit there. But then she's going to turn it like this. And let's put these vectors on here again. Um, let's see. There's our R vector. And the momentum vector, remember it's spinning in this direction. And this one was spinning. So then it's spinning this way, and so this cross this, and then the momentum vector is actually 
again acting along the axis of rotation here. Oh, excuse me. Okay, so when she flips this from this position to this position, the momentum is acting to the side now, and this will want to move in that direction, and you will see her actually spin. Okay. My granddaughter is not here. I'm going to have to go visit her at her house. So I'm going to do that. See you in a few minutes. Okay, like I said earlier, my granddaughter Ily, Ilo Hi. from the content is going to be helping me with this. So here's our wheel. I'm going to spin it. The yellow arrow is the radius or displacement vector. The red arrow is the linear momentum of the wheel. And the green arrow is resultant vector, the angular momentum. Flip it. Come all the way around, put it up straight. And now flip it the other way. This one, no, the other way. Can you? In this orientation, the resultant angular momentum vector is acting to the right, pulling Ilo around. Because the vector, momentum vector, is acting this way and it's pulling her around. Okay. Okay, let's get back around. There we go. Okay. Well, thank you, Ilo. Appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this demonstration of the manifestation of this cross product. Next video, I'm going to look at the lost star of producing science fiction fanzines, which were huge um, from like the 1920s through the early 1960s. And a lot of them were produced and reproduced um, using the spirit duplication process, which I'm going to demonstrate. And that'll be next time. So until then, stay safe.